southern comfort foods you need to try before you die. I absolutely love watching these food videos. Let's jump into this and uh, see what kind of foods we got. If you've ever lived in the American South, you'll know that the food down there has its own unique identity. Uh -huh. And it's absolutely delicious, too. If you haven't tried these, well, bless your heart. These what are the southern that? comfort foods you absolutely need to try. One of the most popular dishes to have come out of New Orleans are beignets. beignets. These airy treats are made with usually square pieces of yeast dough that are fried in hot oil until they puff up. They're uh, then generously start. dusted with powdered sugar and eaten straight away, preferably Ooh. accompanied by a mug of cafe au lait. Ooh. Arguably, the best place to enjoy a beignet is in New Orleans. Prefer Ooh, a beignet? A beignet? A beignet? Beignet? I got they they are looking pretty good. Usually I got at the like. Cafe du Monde in the city's French Quarter. But if getting around is proving a little difficult right now, then you're in luck because Ooh, yeah, they're not difficult to make at home either. Just make sure to turn them Ooh. often in the oil and be careful not to overcook them. Biscuits and gravy is a hearty breakfast dish that you'll find in restaurants and homes. Wait, 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 that isn't the gravy I normally see when I'm watching these videos. Oh, that, that gravy is looking horrible. Oh, I've seen like the white gravy you guys have and it, it looks somewhat okay. You know what I mean? But this right here, this is looking a bit... May, oh, maybe it's got some... Homes across the south. The meaty. soft, flaky biscuits are smothered in white gravy, which is made from pork sausage drippings, milk, and flour. Okay, there's a lot of sausage in that gravy. I can tell. I can tell. I can tell. Apparently that bangs, so I really do want to try that one day. It don't look too uh, like too satisfying for me, but that's like with you guys and beans on toast. Beans on toast to you looks absolutely disgusting, but it's nice, right? So vice versa. I, w I really want to try this one day. The gravy is seasoned with black pepper and typically Ooh. includes pieces of the breakfast sausage too, making it even more flavorful. Yeah, I bet The good that news is, is nice. that sausage gravy is easy to make at home, and there are plenty of different recipes available online. Failing that, you could pick up some of the ready mix packets at the grocery store, although you'll really want to try the homemade stuff at least once. Right, I, As for I need the biscuits, to try it. If making them from scratch just isn't feasible, the Pillsbury ones you pop open and bake will work just fine. Just don't let a southerner catch you taking those shortcuts. <laughs> okay. okay, so boiled peanuts sound kind of bland compared to I roasted peanuts. peanuts. But don't judge a book by its cover. These are actually really good. They're made by taking raw peanuts and boiling them for hours in salty water over a fire uh -huh. until the shells turn soggy. These peanuts are then oh sold God. at roadside stands all over the south, where residents and tourists alike enjoy them, often with bottles of Coke or sweet tea. Ooh, for what it's worth, up. it's usually best to munch on boiled peanuts outdoors. So you can easily spit out their soggy shells right. because it's nearly impossible to crack them open with your hands. Of course, some people opt to eat these peanuts whole, shells and all, but that's one heck of an acquired taste. Yo, you're eating the... Wait, wait, wait. I need to know who's eating peanut shells. You guys are wild, man. Okay. Yeah, I'm never eating peanuts For centuries, this guy. people have been making use of their stale bread by creating their own kinds of bread pudding. Ooh. Often made with bread, cream, Ooh. eggs, sugar, spices, and raisins, modern bread pudding is the oh, highest that looks good. Foods and should do wonders for warming you up on a cold and dreary day. So how do you make bread pudding even better? Oh, that was Just so add good. bourbon. In the South, people often add a few dashes of bourbon to a number of different recipes, and bread pudding is one of them. The bourbon oh combines with the cream and sugar to create a thick, warm sauce that is drizzled over the warm bread. I don't know why I do this to myself every single time, because it makes me so hungry. You know what? I'm actually eating in an hour. I'm actually, I've got, I've, I got food on the way. I'm good, man. I'm good. Get me hungry for my food, pudding right? right before serving. You got some Friends Chinese food on the way. Friends with stew is a hearty tomato-based stew that's hugely popular stew. in the South. It typically features lima beans, corn, and other vegetables, uh, along with some sort of meat. The base includes barbecue sauce and a little hot sauce for some heat, too. Early versions of the stew use... All right, that's a, that stew is very different to the stew I have here. Normally, I have stew here, and um, my girlfriend is... I'd, I'm not really too sure what she puts in it. I just love it. I know it's beef. I know there's broccoli, carrots. I'm not really a good cook myself, so I have no clue what else is going in it to make the stew, but uh, potatoes, but it's really good. Squirrel meat, but if you're not brave enough to keep it authentic, you can heat too. Oh. Early versions of the stew use squirrel meat, but if you're not brave enough to keep it authentic, you can always oh. substitute the squirrel with rabbit, chicken, or just about anything else. Wait, you guys eat squirrels? Wait, is that a fig? I, I never do that. You guys eat squirrels? Virginians claim the stew originated in their Brunswick County, while Georgians will tell you it was first made in the city of Brunswick, Georgia. Wherever it came from, however, it's a truly delicious comfort food that'll easily take the chill out of a wintry day. Oh, that Grab was some good. cornbread, or loaf of any crusty bread for that matter, to sop up all the southern goodness. Fried catfish is a simple dish that's available at most restaurants that serve catfish. fish in the south. And the good news is that catfish is pretty good mm. for you, since it's high in omega-3 fatty acids and low in mercury. If you can't find it at a restaurant near you, however, you're- Hey, hey, 
I don't know why I paused on this screen because I absolutely hate raw fish. Um, I, I'm not really a big sushi guy. I'm more of like, I like my fish to be battered and cooked. So I like cod, haddock. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so I probably would like catfish. Your grocery store may offer farmed catfish, which is also typically clean and nutritious. Catfish is easy enough to prepare. Dip it in milk, dredge it in seasoned cornmeal, and fry it in hot oil. It only takes a few minutes to get it golden brown on the outside and beautifully flaky on the inside. Oh, la, la. Add a squirt of lemon Ooh. and a side of rice, then start chowing down. Oh, yo, that looks good, I can't lie. For a truly comforting meal, there's nothing like a bowl of chicken and dumplings. If you aren't in the South, where you can find them at most sit-down restaurants, you can try making these at home by dropping biscuit dough into cooking soup. And though they Not aren't difficult much to make, fun. dumplings are a kind of art form and they can take some time to perfect. You don't want your dumplings undercooked and wet inside, but you also don't want them so overcooked that they start falling apart in the broth. Right. Stick them with a toothpick, and if it comes out clean, you're good to go. Yeah, not Chicken too much of a fun Chicken fried steak, sometimes called country fried steak, is made from a tenderized cube steak, which is battered like fried chicken, oh. pan fried and topped with white gravy. While you can oh. find chicken fried steak in an array of southern states, it's most closely associated with Texas. And as with most things, it's always bigger in Texas too. That looks good. And this is the white gravy that I was on about before. This is the gravy that I've seen. The, the, the white gravy that we've seen before, that was looking very, very, very meaty. This looks good, man. Even the veg. Even, I don't even know what veg this is. It just looks good. Oh. In fact, at Lulu's Cafe in San Antonio, you can find a 21-ounce version of this dish. And it's not a coincidence that Lulu's is also home to the famous three-pound cinnamon roll, too. What is that? That's just how they roll down there, as it were. Yo. For your next Super Bowl party, why not forego the wings and serve up a batch of southern fried chicken gizzards okay. instead? Yeah, Believe it or talking. not, your guests might thank you for it. Okay, so you probably don't want to think too much about what a gizzard is, but that'll be easy enough to do once you realize how good it tastes. <laughs> you can cook gizzards in a number of ways, but... Wait, 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 wait. Isn't gizzard chicken balls? Ch chicken testicles? Is, is that what it is? Is that what it is? But it's best to boil them first and then coat them before deep frying. Throw in a little hot sauce, and soon oh. you won't be able to get enough of these tender little morsels. Oh! Chicken pot pies, and I. Hey, listen, she said it, it, it's horrible of what it is, but how good it tastes is worth it. It better be tasting really good for me to be eating some chicken balls in my mouth. It better be insane. <laughs> it better be. I better put the chicken balls in my mouth, and I'm just in like heaven right now. Otherwise, ain't no way. Iconic Southern comfort food that, when done right, simply can't be beaten. And done right doesn't mean grabbing a pie from your grocer's freezer section. A flaky golden brown homemade crust is essential for this Southern specialty. Uh. Inside, the chicken needs to be moist and plentiful. The vegetables must be neither too firm nor too mushy. And the gravy creamy but not goopy. Uh, yeah, it is it a challenge to find a good chicken pot pie? Yes, but it really is worth it. I'm not and if you don't trust restaurants like to get it right, you could always experiment with different recipes at home. It might take some time to perfect, but once you mm. land on just the right method, you'll never want to cook anything else. See, the pie's looking good. How crispy this and how golden it is, right? It's mm, looking good. But the inside is a bit too... It, it, it's like giving me like sickly vibes. Like, nah, I pass. Ambrosia didn't actually originate in the South, but you'll still find it at What's plenty that? of Southern potlucks. This variety of fruit salad typically contains mandarin oranges, mini marshmallows, pineapple chunks, and Ooh. shredded coconut mixed with some sort of dairy ingredient. Ooh, okay. Some people use mayonnaise, while others use cream cheese, plain yogurt, or whipped cream. You might- Right, fruit? You're putting mayonnaise? Hey, fair enough with the yogurt, right? Or how you guys, yogurt. Fair enough with the yogurt, but like, uh, mayonnaise or cheese? With fruit? Oh, you guys gotta let me know if you have this. What do you have it with? That's wild. I also find some potluckers adding bananas, cherries, and nuts, too. Yeah. Because why I the heck fruit. not, right? Think of it like a banana split without the ice cream. And then maybe throw in some ice cream anyway. Why not? If you live north of the Mason-Dixon line, you've probably never experienced chitlins before. And you are most definitely missing out. Chitlins are made from the large intestines of a hog. And they need to be carefully cleaned and prepared before cooking, for obvious reasons. Typically, the intestines are soaked in baking soda and water, rinsed several times, turned inside out, and cleaned by hand before being boiled for several hours. And just in case you're doing this at home, be warned. Chitlins smell truly disgusting while they are boiling, so put some onion and lemon in the water to tone down the odor. Yeah, I can lie. That's, yeah, you're saying it smells disgusting. It looks vile. It looks vile. Chitlin can chitl off. It can chitl off. I ain't having that. I, ain't have, what, what, I don't even know what animal it was, but it's intestines. It's like... It's like alien food, that's animal food. After they are boiled, batter and deep fry them. Then serve them up with a little hot sauce. Uh, Though Pennsylvania...
I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Right? If we ever have some chitlins, I ever come to the south. I'm, I'm with one of you guys, let's say. We have chitlins. You guys can have this. I'll have this. This is looking good. Whatever this is, this is looking good. I, I've, I've dipped my lettuce in this and eat that. You, you guys can have the chip. What, the chip, 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 whatever. Batter and deep fry them. You guys can have the chip. Then serve them up with a little hot sauce. Though Pennsylvania has its own version of chow chow, it's actually completely different from the southern variety. What's chow chow? In the south, chow chow is a cabbage based type of pickled relish that incorporates onions, peppers, tomatoes, and a whole lot of seasoning. Ooh, okay. This stuff is often used as a topping for hot dogs and hamburgers, Ooh. but you could also use it to top your cornbread, fish cakes, beans, and even your mashed potatoes. In fact, you Ooh, can put it on let me chow chow with some chow chow. That sounds good. On just about anything. It'll taste great no matter what. Ooh, Colored yeah. greens are a leafy green vegetable, not completely unlike turnip or mustard greens, and are most often associated with soul food. They can be bitter and tough if not cooked properly. But if they're done right, then they'll make the perfect side dish to any southern meal. After washing them well, chop the leaves into inch-long pieces, uh, then simmer them in water. People right. often throw a ham bone into the pot, along with garlic and onion for a little extra flavor. But one of the best addition to collard greens has got to be bacon. You can never go wrong with bacon. Red-eyed gravy is made with the pieces. grease and drippings of pan-fried ham and black coffee. And yeah, okay, that might sound kind of gross, but this stuff is in to be bacon. You can never go wrong with bacon. Red-eyed gravy is made with the grease and drippings of pan-fried ham and black coffee. And yeah, okay, that might sound kind of gross, but this stuff really is amazing. The coffee yeah. is first used to deglaze the pan, but is then combined with the grease on a one-to-one -one ratio, I resulting in a highly unusual yet genuinely delicious gravy. You can pour the simple gravy what? over your ham, potatoes, rice, or grits, but many folk choose to simply sop it up with biscuits. Coffee great? <laughs> coffee great? What? <laughs> Yo, you guys are wild out there, but it works. I, I actually, like... A lot of these foods are like weirding me out, but that's because I live in the UK. We're very bland here. Do you know what I mean? We're very, very, very bland. So do not get offended when I'm getting weirded out. We're just not used to it. If I come to the South, I am going on the craziest food tour of my life and I'm eating everything. Breakfast, lunch, wait, breakfast, dinner, tea. Wait, what did you guys say? Breakfast, breakfast lunch, dinner? I don't know. I don't know. But let's just say five, five times a day. I, I don't care. I don't care. I, I'm literally tripling my size. Yes, yes. Crawfish, crayfish, crawdads, or mud bugs. Whatever you call them in your neck of the woods, these freshwater crustaceans are some of the tastiest seafood out there. Well, you eat of them just course, like that? you can eat crawfish meat dipped in drawn butter, just like you would with lobster. But if you ever find yourself in the Cajun areas of Louisiana, do yourself a favor and seek out crawfish etouffee. Okay. This is when crawfish meat in a spicy roux is poured over rice mm. for an amazing dish with mm. a seriously deep flavor. Mm. As simple as it sounds, you don't oh, want to make fried my. chicken and waffles at home. Oh, this video is going to kill me. This video is actually, my, my insides is like just screaming right now. Instead, hop on over to one of the South's many <sighs> awesome waffle establishments or diners, the places that really get it right. If you haven't experienced chicken and waffles before, it might seem like an unusual combination, but I it never really have. does work. Crispy on the outside and juicy on the inside, no, perfectly seasoned fried chicken makes a heavenly partner for a plate of buttery waffles. This is also an incredibly versatile dish and should work great for breakfast, lunch, dinner, or a late night snack. I actually feel like crying. Fried green tomatoes is a simple southern side dish that packs a big punch. The key when making fried green tomatoes is to avoid them turning into a soft, soggy mess. Right. Check your unripened tomatoes are suitably firm, then cut them into three-eighths to half-inch slices and soak them for an hour in a mixture of buttermilk and hot sauce. Dredge the tomatoes in a combination of cornmeal and cornstarch, then fry them in bacon grease over medium high heat until they're crispy on the outside. See, I don't, I don't really, I'm not a massive fan of like tomatoes. Um, oh my god, you guys got me saying it in the American way. Tomatoes. I'm not a massive fan of tomatoes, <laughs> but they look good. They but be careful look good. not to overcook them. You can dip them in just tomato, about anything. Tomato. But a remoulade with mayo, hot sauce, horseradish, and Cajun spices would be the ultimate authentic accompaniment. I miss the smell of coffee. <laughs> and bacon frying. Mm. Yeah. Oh, what I wouldn't give for a plate of fried green tomatoes. <laughs> if you're looking for something a little out of the ordinary to fill you up, consider jambalaya. A favorite in Louisiana, jambalaya is a mix of sausage, chicken, seafood, and vegetables aye, cooked aye. in the same pot with rice and stock. Crayol jambalaya contains tomatoes, while the Cajun version does not. Both, of course, are extremely tasty. <laughs> jambalaya. <laughs> In Cajun Jambalaya, in rural Louisiana, Ooh. you might also find a variety of game meats used, as well as alligator, crayfish, and even turtle. All Southerners oh know God. that everything's better when you fry it. I, know, I never knew you guys was eating these different kind of animals, but it makes sense you got them over there, fair enough. 
it, watching these videos just makes me realize that UK is actually incredibly bland. Like we, the, the choice that we have for foods is so slim. And okra is no exception. To make these golden nuggets of veggie goodness for yourself, slice your okra, dip it in buttermilk, and then coat it in cornmeal and season before deep frying. Okay. The best thing here is that okra is seriously good for you since it's low in calories and contains a great deal of fiber, potassium, calcium, and vitamins. That literally looks like, like this right here, looks like marijuana balls. <laughs> potassium, calcium, and vitamins. The hot brown sandwich originated at the restaurant in the Brown Hotel in Louisville, Kentucky in the 1920s, and it's still served there today. The hot brown is traditionally an open-faced turkey sandwich with tomatoes covered in Mornay sauce, which is baked, topped with bacon, and then broiled. Ooh. Some people say it was originally created with peaches rather than tomatoes. Others swear it's a great hangover cure. Pretty much everyone agrees, however, that it's a genuine, bona fide, once-in-a-lifetime sandwich. Oh my god, that's a sandwich? If you've sandwich? ever eaten that Long John Silver- What? Yo, this looks- Wait, what is this? This looks good. First, you've probably had their hush puppies, but the ones you can get at a southern restaurant or fish fry are a heck of a lot better than the Long John variety. Wait, what are they? Hush puppies are basically balls of fried cornmeal batter that are huh? often served alongside fried fish or shrimp. Though hush puppies aren't exactly complex, they're kind of like potato chips. And that it's- Wait, hush puppies? Well, I've heard of that before. I think I watched a video and someone mentioned it. But what? They're like potato? They got potato in them? They're looking good. I, I swear, like, I would devour it's these. Virtually impossible to eat just one. Southern pecan pie made with a splash of high-quality bourbon is hard to beat. If you don't have a restaurant in your area that makes a killer pecan pie, though, it's not too difficult to make at home. What However, you'll want to experiment with the amounts of corn syrup, brown sugar, and bourbon you're using until you find just the right combination. I'm right, okay. sure you might end up having to bake a load of pies to get it right. But who's going to complain about that? More pies if you eat. aren't from the South, then there's a chance you aren't too familiar with pimento cheese. Nah. Basically, pimento cheese is a mixture of cheese mixed with mayo and pimento peppers. It can Ooh. be spread on crackers, stuffed into celery, and scooped onto chips. So oh, okay, you know what? I actually said at the start of the video, what on earth is that, right? But that sounds really good. That actually sounds really, really good. Peppers with cheese. Oh, I love peppers. People add it to scrambled eggs or grits, while others use it as a relish for brats, burgers, and hot dogs. Okay. In Louisiana, they spice it up by adding hot sauce or cayenne pepper into the mix. Ooh. But the possibilities for pimento cheese are endless. And once you start incorporating it into your recipes, you're never going to want to stop. Yeah, it, Hot liquor it is the liquid so that's good. left behind after you boil green vegetables. So what do you do with it other than pour it down the sink? Well, some people save pot liquor and use it in place of stock in their next stew or soup, while others pour it over rice or potatoes. But the best thing to do with pot liquor is drink it. It might seem a little odd, but that way you can reap all the nutrients that have boiled out of the greens. Red beans and rice nah, is a pass. staple dish in Louisiana Creole cuisine. Traditionally, families took the ham hocks, bones, vegetables, and beans that were left over from Sunday dinner and use them to create a scrumptious dish of spicy beans that were served with rice the next day. Ooh. Cayenne pepper, Tabasco sauce, and other seasonings okay. can turn up the heat on this hearty meal. While some people like to add in sausage or other meats. Here's a tip Oh though. my, you guys do it good over there. I swear, I'm telling you right now, like all the different foods that you just put together, it's just, the, the craziest meals that we have in the UK is like a Sunday roast or, bre or full English breakfast. Like, <laughs> or stew actually, stew does bang. St I, I got, stews are really good over here, but yeah, other than that, everything's just simple, like fish and chips or chicken and chips or pizza and chips or someone else and chicken nuggets and chips. You, you, you're getting the feed, right? You're getting the feed. If you boil bones to make a broth for the base, you'll get exactly the flavor you want without having to add anything else. Gumbo is sometimes confused with jambalaya, but it's not the same thing at all. I'm not the key difference is seafood. that with jambalaya, the rice is cooked with the rest of the ingredients. With gumbo, however, the rice is cooked separately. Gumbo is a stew created with a strong, robust stock, sausage, shrimp, other shellfish, and the holy trinity of vegetables, bell peppers, celery, and onions. The most important aspect of home cooking a great gumbo is perfecting the roux that's used as its base. Or you could just head down to New Orleans and get someone to make it for you. Right. Your call. Where's my mac and cheese? Everyone knows that real macaroni and cheese doesn't come out of a box, nor does it come with a packet of powdered cheese. Real good old-fashioned southern mac and cheese is a completely separate dish altogether. You know what? I think I'm like the only person on the planet that actually doesn't like mac and cheese. I have tried it before. I didn't really like it. I would probably try it again at a better place because I do like cheese. Um, and I do, I do kind of like pasta. I'm not that crazy on it. But a lot of people love mac and cheese and I'm, I'm just there like, don't really taste that great. 
If I was in America, I'd definitely try it and see what it's like because it'd probably be better over there, but... It's often created with a combination of cheeses, and you can use anything from smoked cheddar and Monterey Jack to Gruyere and Velveeta. Southern recipes usually feature heavy whipping cream, evaporated right. milk, or both. And the dish is baked in the oven until the sauce is creamy and the top is crispy. No matter Ooh. how much you love macaroni and cheese, that you've never really good. tried it until you've had it in the South. You might have seen sweet potato casserole at Thanksgiving dinner and passed it by, but it's time to stop sleeping on this delicious dish. Though some folks love it topped with charred marshmallows, oh others that? prefer a topping made with brown sugar and pecans. Give it a go, and you'll soon realize that this often overlooked Thanksgiving side dish deserves a place on your dinner table all through the year. Check out one of our newest videos right here, oh. plus even more mash- Now I'm starving. But it's good because I got food on the way, so it's all good. I think the one that I'm craving the most in the video has to be the chicken steak with gravy and the veg on the side. That just, oh, that just sent me just crazy, man, looking at that. There was loads of good foods there. Let me know which food is your favorite or which one you have the most. Enjoy the video. Hopefully you guys did as well. If you did, make sure you perform it, subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on Twitch.tv before slash L3WG. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.